No. I don't think this is gonna fit in frame. It's a little bit better. So I bought a Super Famicom from Japan. Came with a box and everything. It's in, it's in okay condition. It turns on and runs. I've already played a few games. Uh, as you can tell, it is pretty yellow. And it probably needs a good cleaning and everything. I also wanted to look and see if I can figure out if this is a one-chip console or not. And maybe do some modding. So, I think I'm going to take this apart so I can clean it. Uh, maybe do the retro bright. It's got a weird yellow tinge hanging out in a smoker's home kind of look. So I want to take this apart. Hmm. Oh. It looks pretty clean. Oh my. Controller thing fell in. Ooh. There is some stuff in here. I guess it's not that bad. There's not a whole lot of dust, but I see. I see some Japanese hair. I think I can clone this person now. I'll keep that on the back burner. I don't, I don't know if that's legal yet. So I don't think I don't think this is a one chip. But it doesn't matter. Ooh, I found another hair. Doesn't really matter if it's a one chip fine with me having a regular Super Nintendo. I don't think there's any problem with that. At some point I'm going to try and get some component cables for this. Uh, fortunately I have a nice flat screen TV that has both component and um, the RCA cable connections so I can Easily hook this up. I think I can pull that out. Okay. Ooh, now that is in need of a cleaning. It looks like a header ribbon for the controller ports just pull straight out okay what is that I wonder these are threaded on from the bottom I guess I gotta take the motherboard out to take those shrouds off or whatever they're called separate. Another thing I want to look at as far as a mod is having a better way to power it because I do not don't really want to use the power brick. Okay there we go. <laughs> My Japanese dust. Take care of that later. So what I've heard from some people online is that this transformer, I think that's what it is, I don't really know my components all too well, this transformer takes the voltage, yeah I think that's it, takes the voltage, input, ground, output, you can see the IGO right there, I think it takes the 10 volt uh, from the power source, that big ass brick, 
and then steps it down to five, I think, because most of everything on here, I think, uh, runs on five volts in my plan. If I could do it, is to just have this run on USB-C, because my phone runs on it and I have a bunch of those wall warts hanging around, so I have a spare USB-C port. Ugh, hairs. I'm gonna take a look at that. I think probably have to screw that first. Also, it's a nice aluminum. Heat sink or plate. Yeah, I don't think this is a bunch of that. Man, that looks pretty good. And the top is not, not as dirty. I think the top is pretty good. Okay, there's a piece of dust. I see it. It's floating in there. I think I'm gonna. Ugh. Okay. I'm gonna take everything apart that I can and then clean it. This comes off in multiple pieces. Let's do a time lapse. USB C port, a little uh, cleat I'm going to put on the back to keep it secured. Taking out the RF uh, thing out of the Super Nintendo, it has a cutout that is roughly the same width as the USB C port. Let's see if I can get that. Okay. You know, I think that's going to work out pretty uh, damn good. Cool. Also, currently, I am uh, retro brighting the shell of the Super Nintendo right now. So I'm just waiting for the sun to work its magic on the, the yellowed parts. I'm going to check on that in a couple hours. Hopefully, the Super Nintendo will be restored back to a somewhat gray tone, like the, the back of the shell here. I tried to do the retro brighting thing. The top um, got ugly. Other parts turned out pretty good, including the bottom. It's got a smooth you know, finish to it. It's a little bit lighter. It's still kind of yellow, but it's better than the splotchy finish of the top. So that's kind of a bummer. I think this is a 5 volt to 9 volt. There you go. 5 volt to 9 volt converter, so it just takes 5 volt USB power 
steps it up to 9 volts. And then the, the plug that this system runs on normally is 10 volts. And 9 volts is in that range to power the system once 9 volts comes in. Goes to this voltage regulator. It'll step it down to 5, which it needs. Makes everything run off that just fine. I think I'm going to crack it open too to see exactly what kind of board is in there and how that's running. I have to memorize which side is which, but... Cut it about here, I think. I imagine that board that's in there that is stepping up the voltage is pretty small, I would imagine. I don't think I need this entire plastic case. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna mark it so that I know after I cut this off. This is the USB 5 volt side, and this is the output 9 volt. Will this be enough? Just put a black mark. So I guess I can remove this as well. I'll go ahead and snip off the end. Don't need it. Where are the two leads onto the USB-C? Where are these two ends onto the input voltage on the Super Nintendo? And then we'll be in business. And then I'll just have to correct the mistakes of the ugly Retrobrite. You know what, I'm gonna remove these actually. Probably just use my 30 gauge wire. Just gonna cut off a bit on my power and ground. Ooh. Perfect. Okay, I guess this is an update. I got rid of the splotchy finish like this stuff here on the main part of the body by uh, wet sanding the entire outside area that's going to be visible. The problem with that is, well, this isn't exactly the same color but the texture difference now because I sanded off, <laughs> sanded off that fine texture that was on there normally but I have to say Having a slightly smoothed exterior is a lot better than having a splotchy one. So I'm gonna call this good enough for now. I'm gonna get back to the electronics work. Off camera, I soldered on my USB-C port to the uh, boost circuit board. See there's a V for voltage pad and a G for ground pad. Everything is soldered up from here, but I want to protect that, so I'm gonna put some hot glue on there, and I think I'm gonna wrap this board in some captain tape. While that dries, I'm gonna go over my Second plan of attack, I'm gonna try and remove this red LED here and swap it out with some that I got from Adafruit. All right, so to get this, to get this LED removed, just two pads right here. I'm gonna use the really crappy solder sucker my kit came with. See that diffused five millimeter slow fade. Wow, 
well. Look at that focus. Okay, so I just need some super glue. Have some clamps. A bit overzealous for the job, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that will work. So we need to have the port sit in there like that. running them through this little opening I just ran them off to the side and changed up the board location I think that'll work yeah I think we are good to go Let's put it all together <laughs> 